It's Dave from thinkoutsidetheslide.com. Recently, I presented a session at the Excel Virtually Global Conference on my five favorite Excel chart hacks. In this video, I want to share with you the third hack, using the NA error value to hide a data point. I'll link to the playlist with all five hacks in the top right corner. I want to start by sharing with you the hack as I presented it during the conference session. Then I'll come back and share some additional tips, ideas, or resources to help you apply this idea to your Excel charts. Let's start with the video from the conference session. The next chart hack that I want to show you is using the NA error value to hide a data point. Now, initially, you might be thinking, Dave, why would I want an error to show up on my chart? That just doesn't sound like it's a good idea. And it wouldn't be except for the fact that this error, the NA error value, by default, does not appear on a chart. Why is this valuable? It's valuable because it allows you to set up data series where some, maybe most of the data points you don't want to show up, you can create that data series and simply use the NA error value in that data point because you know it's not going to show up on the chart. This allows you to set up multiple data series in your chart, each of those data series being used for only one purpose. For example, in waterfall charts, I have a data series for those positive segments, for negative segments, for total segments. Each of those segments I can format separately, and when a value isn't supposed to be shown, I just simply use the NA error value. And conveniently, what you're going to see in the example is that there's a function in Excel that creates that NA error value. We don't have to type it in. It's already built in. So let's go over to Excel and let me show you how we can use this NA error value to our advantage when building charts in Excel. We're back in Excel and the example here is that we want to show the maximum temperature. We want to highlight that maximum temperature in a series of data for one week, Sunday through Saturday, you can see here. How do we make that one maximum stand out? Well, we could manually calculate it, or what we can do is we can use this idea that the NA error value doesn't show up to create a second data series. So we're going to have a column chart, and that second data series, the maximum data series, is going to overlap the regular data series but it's only going to be shown for one value, the maximum. So when I set up my chart data table here, I have my temperature as it was input, as, as it came in from our data source. And then I have another data series called max for our maximum. And this uses a formula. I'm gonna zoom in on the formula so we can see it. And let's talk about this particular formula. So the formula says, okay, if, this particular temperature, so we're in row 18 here. So if B18 equals the maximum, the maximum. So we ask Excel, go look at all the data, B18 through B24, and find the maximum. If this value, B18, equals that maximum, then do what? Well, in this max data series, put in the value for this data point being that temperature because for the maximum temperature, that's what we want. But if it's not, if it's not the maximum, which of course is going to be all the data, the data points except for the one maximum, then what do we do? And this is where we see this function, the NA error function. What the NA error function does, it doesn't need any arguments, it's just NA, open round bracket, close round bracket. What does it do? What it does is it puts in this NA error value. This allows us to have that data point not show up in the chart. So even though there is a data point, you see a data point here for each of the max data, the, each of the rows for the max data series, these NA ones don't show up. And the only one that does show up is that 25, the maximum. The other reason that this NA is really valuable to put in as a data point instead of a blank or some other value is because, well, those will show up on the chart. 
But the other thing is, is that when you are doing calculations, if you have to calculate something with this particular data point, you can use the ifNA function in Excel. What ifNA does, that function, it says, well, if the value is NA, then you get to specify what the value is. So it doesn't error. The calculation doesn't blow up. It doesn't give you an error. This makes it really valuable when we're doing these calculations, especially, you know, when we've talked about these invisible segments, invisible segments, and you start to have segments that you don't want calculated or some segments don't uh, have a value for waterfall charts. Again, an NA error value is going to be for some of those data points, but you have to do calculations on them. That's where the if NA helps. So you see how these functions work together. Now, let's build this chart and show you that these NA error values don't show up in the chart. So I'm going to select both of my data series here for each day of the week, and I'm going to insert just my regular column chart here. And you'll notice by default what happens is the columns are beside each other. Well, that's what Excel is going to do by default. What I want to do again is to get them to overlap. So the way we do that is we set that overlap to 100%. Again, I'm going to select one of the columns for either data point, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna press Control-1 on my keyboard. And in my series overlap here, I'm going to select the series overlap to 100%. And like before, I'm gonna set the gap width to 50%, okay? And now what happens is the max data series only has that one value. Even though it's on top of the regular temperature data series, you don't see it covering up any of the other columns. It only covers up the one column for which the maximum value is. And as the data changes, it will automatically change. This is, the, again, a great way to have graphs that update themselves automatically and reduces the manual effort you have to put in every month to update those charts for your executives. Let me show this to you. Now, first of all, of course, we can get rid of our legend because we don't need that anymore. And let's say, for example, let's say Tuesday, if we change the data that came in, Tuesday, let's say it was 27 degrees. As soon as I enter it, you'll notice the chart updated with which was the maximum. This is a great way to have your chart automatically update for you. And when I press Control Z undo, it goes back. So start thinking about the possibilities with this. Think about, well, you could have some labeling, for example, where you have a data label that is customized. And for some cases, you don't need certain uh, data labels to show up. So you can just put an NA as the value for that data point, and it's not gonna show up. So you can now start to leverage these ideas and build them together in order to create those advanced charts that you really wanna create. You don't need to use some fancy data viz package. Excel has a lot of capabilities. If you simply leverage some of these chart hacks to create those advanced charts that you want to create. During the session in the chat, a number of the Excel MVPs said that they use this NA error value all the time. And John Pelty, who is the world's foremost uh, expert in Excel charts, he commented that the technique I've shown you here is actually an advantage because if two values are the same maximum, they will both show. So for example, on the Tuesday here, if, I, if it's 25 as well, you'll notice in the chart that it shows both Tuesday and Thursday as the maximums. Now, in the chat, somebody asked a question, can you use this technique that I've shown you to control where data labels show up? And yes, you can. So I answered that and demoed it uh, in the session. So let me show you that video so you can see that solution as well. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. So the question that came in is uh, a really great question. People, and, and it's good to see this because people are trying to extend the idea that I shared. So the question was, can the trick you use to highlight the maximum temperature 
be used to control which values get labels in a line chart. And that's a wonderful idea for extending that, that particular fact that I showed you. And yes, that's exactly what you can do. So let me actually show you, I'm gonna share my screen in uh, Excel here. And let me show you how this uh, works. So I have, uh, here's that example that you were asking about is the temperature. And we got the values of NA and we got the 25. So the question becomes, can we use this for data labels? That's exactly what we can do. So let me show you how we do this. So let's say I wanted to add data labels, but I only wanted the data label to show up when that was the maximum. Now I've done that through the, the uh, color here, the orange color, but if I add a data label, it's exactly going to be the same. It's only gonna show for those values that are not the NA error value. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say, add a data label. And again, I'm going to use the more options. Uh, this is something that I showed in the session. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to combine a couple of items in the data label. So one of the things to notice here is that the, the series name I've put here is max colon. So I've added a colon after it. That's because I want to use that as a separator. So let's go back to my data labels here. And I'm going to just zoom in for a second here so you can see this. So it says, what do you want the label to contain? Well, I want it to contain the series name which is the max colon and the value. And I want to separate them not by a comma, but by a space. And so now what you'll notice is my label is max colon space 25, but you don't see that label for any of the other columns. It doesn't, you don't have that for any of the other columns. Now, when you change, so let's say, uh, again, Tuesday instead of 19 was, uh, let's say, 27. Okay, it's 27, hit enter. You'll notice not only the color has moved, but also the label moved. So the, the person who asked about, can we use this to control data labels? Absolutely, it's the exact same idea. You get to choose and what I showed you here, additional sort of idea is to set your data series to be exactly what you want it to be. Now, you might say, well, Dave, okay, you used a space as the separator between the text and the number. Well, why can't you just pick colon? Like, you know, why do you have to type it in? Well, because Excel doesn't allow you to use colon. It's not something that's even an option in the dropdown list. Now, if you're using the online version of Excel, what you'll notice is you have more options for the character that separates two portions or segments between the, uh, the data series name and the uh, actual value. So it's one of those things where it's a difference between the versions of Excel. Unfortunately, that's a difference and we can't uh, kind of do anything about it, but it is something that we have to understand those limitations. So if you're mostly gonna be dealing with the desktop version, version which is uh, what mine is, then you have to type it in. And when you start to take the idea of the NA error value and combine it with the invisible segments that we talked about, you can create a visual like this. This was created for a request about how uh, these different banks can be scored on these four criteria out of five, showing the minimum and the maximum. And so you start to see a lot of NAs in my data table here because a lot of the times, uh, you know, out of six banks, if you're talking about the best and the, the worst or the maximum and the minimum, there's only one of the six. So the other five are, are by nature going to be NA. So I have an entire tutorial on exactly how I created this visual. And uh, again, it's, it's on my website and it's a YouTube video. I will link to this in the description down below so you can check this out. That's one of the hacks that I shared during my Excel Virtually Global conference session. To see all the hacks that I shared and all the additional information, use the link beside me to open the playlist that has the videos for all five hacks. Thanks for watching.